Well, we get to welcome you all this morning, and I'm glad that you're here. And uh, we are, uh, we're, I'm excited about being able to start bringing people back a little bit more. And we, uh, I would love to have this place packed out come April the, whatever that first Sunday is in April, I should have looked at it, but Easter, I uh, hope to have just a, just a really large crowd here at that time. So, but I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, uh, things will get back to normal at some point, uh, to some kind of normal. It might be a new normal, but it'll get back to that. But I'm delighted that you're here. Um, I want to have a prayer with you. I'll turn it over to Katie and, and Sally and Robin, and, uh, and uh, we'll just have a, have a good time in the Lord. And, uh, and his words. So let's uh, let's bow together. Father, we bow before you, and I like to say this, that we would bow to no one else. Uh, there's no reason to bow to a man. There's just not. Um, uh, but Father, we, we do bow before you. And Lord, we want to thank you for uh, being able to be here. A lot of, a lot of things in that. Uh, just being able, uh, physically, um, the fact that we can, and there's no uh, consequence to it, a negative consequence. Father, I pray that you would anoint this time, that you would be honored in our words and, and our songs, you'd be honored in our heart that, uh, that this place would be um, just a great place for you to rest your entire presence here. And uh, Father, we, we want you. We want your son. We want the Holy Spirit. Um, and so we're praying this. Father, we pray for Bob, that you'll continue to take care of him. Uh, Father, we pray for uh, Bonnie, that you will continue to bring healing to her. Um, I know there are other needs, like Jane. That, Father, we're asking for your blessing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. church. It is so good to be back with y'all here in the Lord's house. Um, I hope you enjoyed the snow. I hope that you got to 
maybe get out in it for a little bit. I know for me, my five-year-old kind of dictated that I was to be out in it every single day, whether I liked it or not. So we are so happy that you are here with us today. We're happy if you're joining us online as well. Um, like our pastor said, Brother Don, we are going to be uh, hoping that everybody can join us on Easter Sunday. Uh, Music-wise, we're going to have our wonderful quartet back. They're going to help me lead the service, uh, which I think will be definitely a treat just because we have so many wonderful musicians here. If you will stand, greet one another, and we will get started. to the edge of the cliff. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. I was envious of the prosperity of the proud and wicked. Yes, all through life they are troubled and smooth. They grow to sleep and fat. They are always in trouble and play with clouds like everyone else. And so God's people are dismayed and confused and drink it all in. Does God realize what's going on? They ask. When I saw this, what turmoil filled my heart. I saw myself so stupid and so ignorant. I must seem like an animal to you, O oh God. But even so, you love me. You are holding my right hand. You will keep on guiding me all my life with your wisdom and counsel and afterwards receive me into the glory of whom am I in heaven with you? And I desire no one on earth as much as you. Amen. Let's keep worshiping this morning. If you will stand and join me for Spirit of God descend upon my heart.
going to be reading from Revelations chapter 7, verses 1 through 4, and then 9 through 17. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the leaders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Thank you, Robin. That last little bit of the passage, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. I think about everything that has happened this year, um, everything that's happened in the past year, 2020, and how many tears have been shed over the loss of loved ones, the senseless violence that our nation and world, quite frankly, has had to endure. And the only peace that I can find in it is that one day God is going to call us home and every single tear that we have shed will be accounted for and we'll know that it was wiped away by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, rightfully so, we are going to continue worshiping with probably one of my favorite hymns because the words, I mean, every set of lyrics and every kind of hymn we have is powerful, but especially in How Great Thou Art. Um, there's a part of this song that I just love, and it's, And when I think of God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That's his only son, and he sent him because he loved us so much that he wanted us to enjoy heaven with him. And I personally cannot wait to experience what I know my grandparents are experiencing and my other family are experiencing in his wonderful presence. So if you'll stand with me and let's sing How Great Thou Art together.
talk about with prayer before I get into the prayer. Uh, today ends the uh, Saturate Jonesboro campaign. I uh, hope you've been praying this whole month for people to find Jesus and to come to a church where Jesus is taught. And uh, those that have the package, you've got cards to send out. Please send those out uh, as soon as possible uh, to the people that you've been praying for. Second group of, of cards we've been talking about on Wednesday nights is that we want to send out some cards between now and Easter to people that haven't been coming to church to encourage them to be here. I'm talking about within our own church uh, to get as many people here as possible for Easter. And I, I'm understanding there's been relaxation of some of the regulations about the COVID and it could be more by Easter. It may be a great time to celebrate. A great time to celebrate. So please be here and let's Let's invite as many people to be here with us, okay? All right, let's go to the Lord. Uh, if you will stand with me, please. <clears throat> and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us as individuals, as a church, and as a community. Please help us to reach out to those that haven't felt that and that they would be able to seek and find the love your son has given us and that they seek a church home that is teaching of Jesus Christ during this time. Please, Lord, we know that there are many persecuted Christians throughout this world and in this country and we are lifting up prayers for them. And we know that there are going to be some of those that their tears will be wiped away when they are there in heaven by you. And that gives us great joy and feeling to know that they have suffered, but they won't suffer there. And that we will be there to honor and praise them and you, Lord and help us through each and every service to do that. And now let us lift up the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for uh, the light at the end of the tunnel on the COVID uh, virus. Uh, the light is there because of you, and you are the light. We, uh, we rejoice in the fact that our members that have uh, contracted COVID have since recovered and are back to health, and we give you praise for that. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with us, watch over and guide us in these things that we pray Amen. in Jesus Christ's most heavenly and precious name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Lord's Table. Uh, in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel 6, 17, uh, it says that the Lord does not look upon outward appearance, but instead looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. My prayer today for myself and for us is that when we meet people, when we greet people, that we could look aside from what they might look like or what we think they look like and look at their hearts with love. Jesus Christ, near the end of his ministry, knew that uh, his time had, was coming, and he desired to have a last meal with his supporters, with his friends, with the twelve. So they took upon themselves to find a quiet place, and they had their supper, and toward the end of the supper, they took from, Jesus took from the table just simple bread. He said, this bread represents my body. My body is to be broken for you. Take this, eat. And likewise, after blessing the cup, Jesus said, this cup represents my blood. My blood is to be shed for you for the forgiveness of sin, for your sin and for the sins of the world. Take this. Drink. Whenever we come together, Jesus says, do this to remember me.
Thank you, Sally, very much. Thank you, Katie, Robin. Uh, it's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. We have been uh, in the book of Revelation. Uh, I know that for some, uh, that's, a, that's an exciting thing. For some, it's uh, still a little bit of a mystery in the book of Revelation. Understand? Um, I do believe there, there's an awful lot in the book of Revelation that we can understand, uh, if not all of it. Nonetheless, uh, we, are, uh, we are seeking to draw out some of the great truths that are there. One of them is, uh, without question, is the mercy of God. Um, let me explain that. Uh, you go, you start in Genesis and you go through the Bible, you're going to see the mercy of God being expressed over and over and over again. The mercy of God just goes through the Bible. It just keeps going, man, and it's beautiful. In fact, if you could bring up that verse for me, I hope it's uh, Isaiah 61, 3, I believe. Hopefully I've got the right passage there. Thank you. It says, and provide, and this is talking about heaven, this is God, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, uh, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, planting of the Lord uh, for the display of his splendor. Hopefully I'll refer back to that again a little later on. Uh, in other words, uh, God can bring beauty out of ashes. That's kind of what I wanted to focus on there for a moment. Psalm 113 says the same thing. Beauty for ashes. God can take a life that's just been absolutely uh, uh, destroyed, maybe by sin, uh, maybe by someone else, um, and people that have hurt, people that have been, uh, uh, you know, just had all kinds of destruction in their life, he can bring beauty into their life. But what we're talking about here specifically is that with all of the ashes that can happen in our lives, one day God's going to bring beauty out of all of it. Out of all of it, he's going to bring beauty out of the ashes. You see, the title of the message is when the dust settles, there will be beauty from the ashes. Um, I was uh, uh, reading about a guy. Uh, his name is, I believe, is Peter Jasek. He is one of three guys that are going to be sharing their testimonies of having been imprisoned. Uh, Peter was imprisoned in Sudan. There's another gentleman that was imprisoned in Iran and another gentleman that was imprisoned in Turkey. And they're going to share their stories on live stream on March the 5th, and I'll get you more information about that. that you might pick it up if you want to. Uh, but they're, 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 ta they're talking about their own uh, struggles while in prison. Peter was uh, at the airport. He was leaving Sudan after about four days having visited. He was a missionary. Peter was a mission, is a missionary. And he was uh, meeting with a pastor there, and he was leaving. Been there about four days, I believe. And all of a sudden, somebody came up and uh, tapped him on the shoulder. And, uh, you know, he didn't think much about it. He turned around, and, and, and he grew up a missionary's kid. And as a missionary's kid... Um, his, his parents were often detained, uh, but they were, always, they, were, they were always let go after a little while. And uh, so uh, uh, Peter got up, went into a back room, and they laid out these pictures of him uh, at a restaurant, for one, that they had been, that he met at. Said, oh my gosh, these guys have been following me. <laughs> And uh, they said, uh, you know, he, would, he had been meeting with a pastor there. So they charged him with, which were all false, espionage, uh, uh, falsely coming into the country, and some other uh, things that they charged him with. And uh, they threw him in a jail with a bunch of other people. It was pretty crowded. And uh, they, uh, uh, he was with these folks who had done some serious crimes. And, uh, of course, he thought, well, Lord, I guess you've given me an opportunity here. 
So he began to share his faith, and, and, and of course, the, the people that were there were Muslims, and they hated Christianity, and they began to taunt him, and pretty soon they began to uh, hit him, and uh, beat him, and kick him, and all kinds of things while he was there. And uh, in fact, he was still there uh, for days and days, and when they would do their prayers five times a day, they would make him go into the, uh, the ba uh, bathroom area and just stare at the wall and they would do their prayers and then they would read their Quran constantly while they were there. It was just very, very hard on him to hear the, the message uh, that he was hearing from the Quran. But nonetheless, he was able to go to court uh, maybe a week later or so, I don't remember exactly, but he was able to go to court and they, uh, they were charging him, and it was a very serious offense, but what they were charging him with, in fact, generally, they would give life in prison for what they say he had done. So what had happened was that um, he would have to go every week, and they, they, he had some counsel there that was trying to help him, and they told him, said, look, man, we're going to get you off. You're going to go home, you'll be with your family, and he just didn't believe it. And so what had happened was, again, I'm, I'm really abbreviating the story, but what had happened was uh, they gave him a sentence of 24 years. And, uh, and he was, you know, he had a lot of grief going on, but he also found a lot of joy in the scriptures that he could remember. He, he, that's, what, that's what he drank from what were the scriptures that he could remember. And uh, then... Uh, someone brought him a Bible, uh, and uh, he was he would read it from eight o'clock in the morning until uh, the sun uh, the sun went down at night because they had no light. And nonetheless, um, he was gaining hope. He was gaining hope within himself, even though he was he went through some times of real depression. But God had blessed him, and he, and he told his family. Finally, he he was able to write them. And he told us, says, look, God has the keys to this prison. <laughs> and uh, instead of 24 years, he ended up saying 14 months. But I don't know about you, but 14 months would seem like an eternity uh, being in, 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 a, in a prison in, in that kind of a, a setting in Sudan. Uh, but nonetheless, there's three guys that are, that are going to be sharing their story on the 5th of March. And uh, like I said, I'll get you that information. Well, what I want to say here is several things. One is that there is, first of all, there is no chance that you will uh, always be exempt from troubles. Um, I remember a friend of mine told me that. He says, Don, man, he said, he said, man, my life, I mean, he was up in his 40s. He said, Don, I've just never had any problems, man. I mean, none, zero. And uh, all of a sudden, one day, I remember him uh, t telling me about the, the, the difficulties all of a sudden he was going through. And there were very serious problems that he didn't cause. Uh, you know, usually I cause my own. But he didn't cause, but he still had some very serious problems that came into his life. And, you know, the Bible is real clear with that. I've shared this verse with you, but I really like it. It helps me. Believe it or not, it's Job 5, 7. And it says, as sparks fly upward from a fire. So man is born to trouble. And there's really real reason for that. I was speaking with a Christian man for this week who had had heart surgery. And uh, they expected everything to go well and everything to go good. And, and that was weeks ago. And he's still in the hospital. And I got to share with him. Uh, of course, I, I see him every day. And one of the things I told him um, uh, was, you know, one of these days... God is going to use this in your life to help someone out, else out that's been going through that same thing. In other words, God, he does. He, we find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. But the point is, is that God will actually, <coughs> excuse me, will actually take the stuff that we've gone through and he will use it in somebody else's life. But let me go a little step further here. Not only that, that's, that's important, but there's something else. Quite frankly, God can prepare you and me for some of the dark days um, uh, that, that, that can come upon us. You see, here's what happened in the passage that Robin read a little bit ago. God had stopped everything. He paused it all. He was now showing mercy. 
What had happened was is that God takes this time of this, of this great tribulation. What was going on in this tribulation? Well, we found that there was going to be a guy, there's going to be a, a, a world leader that's going to come and, and bring peace, or so it seems. Then God, this other seal comes along, and what's going to happen is, is that there's going to be all kinds of violence that's going to happen. And uh, I don't know about you, but the only way that I can see it would be, if, if you ever read about Chicago, for example, that would be one example. We could use a lot of cities for as an example, but Chicago seems to have, uh, you know, killings every single weekend. And it seems like there's, you know, 30 or 40 people shot and uh, 10 or 12 or 5 people killed or something like that. So if you can imagine what the seal talks about there in, 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 the, in Revelation chapter 6, is that it's going to be a worldwide thing. In other words, it's going to happen all over the place. In other words, where what happens is that, um, is that see, remember, we talked about this in 2 Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, that, that he who restrains will be taken out of the way. You see, the reason why things haven't gone crazy now is because he who is restrains is still restraining. My opinion is, that's all I got here, is that he's slowly removing that restraint as we look around the world. And, uh, and, 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 and nonetheless, but so it goes from this, free, this, this, this uh, peacemaker to all of a sudden peace begins to crumble. Then what we find is, is that uh, there's going to be inflation like we've never dreamed. Then there's going to be, and this one, this one I, 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 I speak carefully. By the way, that inflation says that a day's, a day's wage will buy bread. A day's wage will buy bread. That's what you find in Revelation chapter 6. You say, Don, why would you talk about all this stuff? Why can't we just talk about something else? Well, um, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be a, a terrible thing if we just avoided uh, certain things? Um, there are realities that we all have to face. I, I get to work with people who, who, have, who walk in denial, for example, about death. Um, where they walk in denial that it's never going to happen to their parents. And they literally cannot handle it because they're, they refuse to deal with it. Well, what's going to happen is God is kind of giving you the early edition of what's going to happen. I, I, I'm not the one who said it. Um, this God of mercy, what he's done is he's opened up these six seals and then just like that, he stopped it all. He put these angels out to stop the four winds. And he says, those of you that came to harm, stop. And what he says is, and then he, what he does is he seals these 144,000 Jews. God is going to start working through the Jews now, because the church is already gone. He's going to work through these Jewish people, and uh, there's 144,000 of them. He's going to seal them. What I think the seal is, it's some kind, all I can think of is the Holy Spirit's going to come upon them. I don't know, when I go to Ephesians chapter 1, we find that God seals us in Christ. You know who that is? It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and that's in Ephesians chapter 1. So I'm just thinking somehow the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is going to be in these 144,000 guys. And they're going to become evangelists. And then the next thing that happens in chapter 7, you know what happened? Uh, excuse me. In chapter 7 verse 9 is all of a sudden there's all these people from all over the world that are, that are in heaven. <laughs> all of a sudden there's these people from all over the world that are in heaven. And I believe that they were able to, to preach. They, these people were awakened. Uh, if you'll do me a favor, Brent, bring up Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. I want you to see this. Um, this is where the, the children of Israel become awakened. Watch what happens. It says, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. Just stop there for a second. I love that. <laughs> That God would pour out on us the spirit of grace, right? That we would be gracious, that we would have grace in our lives, but in also prayer. And it goes on, he says, and they will look on me. Who's that? Jesus. Watch this. The one they have pierced. <laughs> That's Jesus back in the Old Testament. Probably about eight, 800 years prior to when Jesus was pierced. 
and they will mourn over him as the one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for the firstborn son. In other words, uh, it's like they lost their firstborn child. They're going to grieve because they realize that they crucified their Messiah. And they're going to become believers. And all of a sudden, they're going to be able to read this book. And you know what's going to happen is they're going to see how that the accuracy of this book. And they're going to go, wow, what's going to happen next? They're going to be able to look at it, see what is going to happen next. And they're going to become believers. Remember why they were persecuted in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Revelation 6? The same thing that happens in Revelation 13. You know, what, you know what it was? They were persecuted because of two things. The word of God and the, they, lived, they, uh, and the, uh, they lived out their faith. Uh, because of the testimony that they lived. They lived out their faith, and they were persecuted for that. Now, guys, look. Look, um, I'm telling you that the signs are everywhere right now. The signs are everywhere. Right now, for example, I want you to know that we're going through a time, and maybe this will stop. I don't know if God will pause this, but we're in a time now where they are, uh, they are now trying to stop uh, you know, people talking, you know, out in the public. They want to, they want to, there, there are those politicians who want to regulate what is going out on social media. They want to regulate that. All I'm saying is there's going to come a time when the message of Christianity, because you and I are exclusive about Christ. We're exclusive about Christ, that he's the only way to the Father. I'm telling you, that's not going to be a popular stand. It's not. And, uh, and man, I could give several examples of things that I've seen recently, but the point is that, uh, that, that, that we're heading into those times like we never have before. And, uh, and the fact is, is that, that God is going to allow some very difficult times. I personally believe that we will not experience it as believers because we'll be caught up to the, to the, you know, with the Lord in the air. But nonetheless, I don't know what exactly we are going to experience. The Bible talks about three and a half years, two, uh, uh, two three and a half years. The first three and a half years is or what we're looking at right now that are pretty bad. Believe it or not, the last three and a half are a lot worse. You say, Don, no, wait a minute. Well, what is this? What, what, kind of, you know, what, what kind of a God are we talking about? We're talking about a God who is filled with mercy, who extends his hand to everybody. And uh, you see, you see, the people that are going to love heaven because of its holiness are going to be people that have been converted, people who have come to faith in Christ. They're going to, they're going, they want heaven. But quite frankly, as you read the book of Revelation, people don't want to see God. They refuse to repent. It says it's very interesting. All I'm saying is, is that. God does bring difficulties into our lives, or he allows them, whichever, I don't even know what word to use sometimes, I don't, it doesn't matter, he still is sovereign over everything, but he's developing us, and he's maturing us, and he's strengthening us, and he's growing us through all of this stuff, you see, that's what he does. I don't know about you, but I'm not like Jesus, like I want to be, I am not there yet, but you know what, I'm on that journey. I'm just saying that I'm on the journey, and I got a million miles to go, but I'm on it, and I want to be there. The second point that I want to make is, one, is you're not going to be able to escape uh, troubles in life. You're just not. They're going to happen. You can pretend, and you can avoid, and you can not think about stuff all you want to, uh, and, and I know people who do just that. Bottom line is, is that they're going to come. The second thing that I want you to know is this, is that when God bids a man, he bids him come and die in order that you might live. Now, I'm going to be rather quick. Last sermon, man, I went long, so I'm going to try not to go long today, okay? I really am, I, but I want to get the points out to you. Uh, when God bids a man, by the way, I didn't make that up. That's Bonhoeffer. Uh, he, he said those words. I just added the last phrase there. When, when God bids a man, when he talks to a man or a woman, he bids them come and die. I'm going to read the passage to you. It may come up on the screen. The passage is Mark 8, verses 34 and 35. And it goes like this. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples. And he said, 
Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And it says in verse 35, well, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Now, all I'm saying is this, that if you really want to live, if you I personally in my life, you guys might think this is crazy. I feel more alive to God than I've ever felt in my entire life. Um, and I'm going to make this clear. Uh, it's not because I'm better. Um, I think it's because I'm just more dependent. I'm seeing my weakness more than ever. I see it. And so I'm more alive. And I want you to know what, what journey I'm on. The journey I'm on is I do want to die to myself. I want to die to myself. I don't want to, I, 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 because I'm, I found just like the same principle, blessed are those, more blessed are those who give than receive. Uh, you guys know that if you do something for somebody, you feel better than they do. Um, and uh, also the same principle, as I die to myself, as I don't allow myself to be first in line. And I want others to be first, and I want, I want Christ to be honored in my life. I'm telling you, that's where life is. That's where you learn, where you experience real life when that happens. Now, can I share where I failed this week? All right? So this week, I had told the Lord that. I said, I said Lord, you know, I mean, I mean I, I, this is the journey I, I, I've been on for a while. But this particular day, I just said, Lord, earlier in the week, I said, Lord, I'm yours. I mean, I'm, I'm here for others. That's it. That's it. And uh, so the one morning, uh, the next morning, or maybe two mornings later, I don't remember, but, you know, it was one morning I get a text. There's a text that goes out to everybody that, that I work with, and it said somebody needed a ride to work. And, uh, and, and you know, so, yeah, I can. You know, so I text back, and I said, yeah, I can. And so, uh, okay, no big deal. But then she texts back. Uh, she said, oh, we got to take my kids to daycare first. Okay, all right. So uh, I said, no problem. You know, I, I didn't think exactly like that. I'm saying to you, no problem, but I didn't, I, that wasn't the down in the heart. It was like, are you serious? Okay. Uh, really sweet girl, by the way. And really, it was, it was an honor to do this, you understand. So we, I got there and we took them to the babysitter so I get to work and and I'm, and I'm doing my thing and, and getting things ready. And I go on over to the hospital and somebody texts me and says, hey, now will you bring me back a cup of coffee? Well, no big deal. You know, there's a, there's a new place over there. It's a Shadrach's in the hospital. And, yeah, that's fine. I, I'll bring one back. All of a sudden I started getting texts. Down, will you bring coffee? Down, will you bring coffee? Down, will you bring coffee? And like, okay. Now I'm, a, and now I'm a courier. Now I'm a uh, Uber and uh, without pay. And so, okay, that's cool. So I, so I get, you know, I mean, I, Again, I said cool, but you understand I didn't mean like exactly cool. And so I, so I remember I already said, Lord, I'm yours. I'll do whatever you want. I'm just telling you the facts. And so then I get there and, and the girl who needed a ride, her car is ready. Well, okay. So, you know, yeah, I'll take, you know, so I run. And the whole day went like that. Now, normally with what I do in the morning, I'm usually done about 10 o'clock with that particular, with the hospital. I'm done by 10 o'clock. Well, it was three o'clock before I got done with that stuff. So my whole day was just, you know, all, uh, but then I had to remind myself, yes, Lord. And I do, I still mean it, Lord, even though I failed today, uh, I still mean it. Because remember, he's looking at the heart, not the action, right? Right? He's looking at the heart. He's not, look, right, Jim? And then what you said earlier, he's looking at the heart, not the action. Just because I, you know, took the garbage out or whatever, doesn't mean my heart was all, you follow? And so, um, but, but there really is a great place to be where you, uh, where you just say, Lord, really, this is really your life. I belong to you. I am your servant, and I want you to do with me today whatever. In fact, Lord, what would be the best thing is if somehow you're honored today through what I do, through what I say, right? Isn't that what we're talking about? So that's what happened here. Um, uh, let's just look at it real quickly because I've got to, I've got to, I really do need to wrap this up. Um, let's see. Uh, I just want you to look at verses 14 and 15. I want you to see this. Now remember those, uh, the Jews, the, the, the children of Israel had become preachers apparently. Now that's a, that's a pretty good guess. But then it says in 14 and 15, it says, I, I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. 
They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God. Now, just stay up with me. Don't let's not leave here. I want you to listen. Um, because if you go to chapter 13, the Bible says that they were killed because of the word of God and the word of their testimony. I want to say it again. They were killed because of the word of God and the word of their testimony. And listen to me. Why were they before the throne? Why were they before the throne? Verse 14 says, it says, uh, let me get back. It says, uh, I've got it right here. Um, it says, they had made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. What does that mean? It means that they trusted in the blood of the Lamb. Guys, listen. Man, no denomination can get you there. No, uh, no position in religious hierarchy can get you there. Um, it's just the blood of the Lamb, guys. It was enough. The blood of the Lamb was enough to get you before the throne of God. And we trust Him. We trust Him. Well, let's see. I've got three minutes to finish up this message, and I'm going to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no chance. The last point I want to make is this. There is no chance. Heaven can be missed because of the shepherd of God. There's no chance, there's no chance that you can miss the joys of heaven because the shepherd of God. What does it say? You're not going to be hungry anymore. Not going to be thirsty anymore. Um, the, 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 later on it says there's going to be no more death. And it says this, I'm going to wipe away the tears from their eyes, as Katie was saying earlier. Do you know what I believe that's going to happen there? I believe it's going to be God. And it says it. I think he's literally going to be able to wash away, just wipe away every tear from their eyes. I tell you, I've been, I've been in ministry now for 38 years, and uh, I've heard uh, an awful lot of stories. Don't know if I've heard it all. I couldn't tell you if I have. Heard a lot of stories, but I've heard a lot of broken stories. I've heard of a lot of abuse. A lot. Um, I've, 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 I've heard a lot of injustice. A lot. And there are going to be people there that are going to have a lot of pain. The pain's still going to be there for one reason or another. We know there are going to be those who are killed because of their faith. We know there are going to be people there even though they went through horrendous times. I think this. I believe that this is, this is again, this is my opinion, so allow me. And I, I believe that those who have been abused in this world, I, I, like I said, I've heard too many. I believe somehow God is going to, what the scripture says this. You ready? I want to try to close here. He says, I'll restore what the locusts have eaten. I will restore what the locusts have eaten. In other words, I believe that God's going to restore all that, that was stolen from them. All that was stolen from them. Uh, kids who depended on people to care for them abused them. Uh, uh, people who, who just simply loved Jesus lost their life. He's going to restore to them all that was taken from them. I mean, the Bible says things like this. You can go to uh, Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35, and it says that those who were lame were going to jump like deer. Those who, who couldn't hear will all of a sudden hear. Those who couldn't speak will be shouting praises. He's going to restore everything back, all of the injustice. God is a God of mercy. Anyone that wants to go to heaven can go to heaven. Anyone that wants to go to heaven, anybody, but it's not under your terms. It's not. It's not. It's all under his terms. And we come before him and we confess him as Lord. Not me, not you. It's Jesus as Lord. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this church. 
I thank you that you have prepared a place. You got a plan set. It's not going to be altered. No, none of us can alter it. And Father, I want you to know that we simply trust in Jesus. We, we believe in him. We're looking to him for our hope. We're looking to him for our salvation. Um, we don't, we don't, we don't want to try to do it on our own because we would mess it up really, really fast. And then we'd mess it up forever. So we're, we're looking to Jesus. He's the one uh, who was rejected so that we would never be rejected again. Thank you for this church. May you help us to be on that journey of dying to self. Thank you. Heads are bowed. Hey, look. Actually, you can look up at me. If God's spoken to you, you say, Don, I need this Jesus, man. I'd love to talk to you. You say, Don, I, uh, uh, man, I want to be on that journey, man. I want to be on a journey where I don't live for myself anymore. I don't want to be, I want to be me-centered. Uh, I want to pray for you for that. Let me know. Um, if God has spoken to you, you uh, let me know that, okay? All right. Uh, we're going to stand together. We're going to sing. And, uh, and uh, we'll have a, a closing prayer. And, uh, Paul, will you lead us in that prayer? Saturate Jonesboro ends today, and I'm doing the closing prayer for that now. Father, may thy kingdom come, thy will be done in Jonesboro as it is in heaven. May Jesus become famous in Jonesboro. O oh God, rent the heavens and come down just like Isaiah said you would. Open the doors of heaven and saturate our church families and church leaders with fresh humility. We know that you, God, are opposed to the proud and give grace to the humble. Give us the humility to return to you and, O oh God, revive us again that your people may rejoice in you. For it is through Jesus Christ we pray this prayer and we all say, Amen. Amen.